Hi, I'm Natalie. My husband went to India and captured some pretty incredible scenes. I'd like to share pieces of a show with you from his show India Face to Face. This one's called Our Own Flesh. It's 4.30 in the morning, and I'm here at one of the slums in Madras, India. I've gotten permission through Pastor Samuel to follow a trash collector named Bhaskar on his morning route. Although we live in the age of information, we know very little about poverty and what it looks like. And yet, there are over 300 million people in India alone that face poverty every day. 300 million people! That's the population of the entire United States, total! It's much easier for me if I just ignore these people and the way they live. It seems like everyone else does. Seeing them makes me feel overwhelmed, helpless, sad, and discouraged. But God promises blessings if we do something about it. We heard about some kindergarten teachers that wanted to make it real to their children. They told them stories, showed them pictures and video, and even built a slum in their classroom. The kids started comparing their lives to the lives of kids their own age in India. And they started asking questions. Could you imagine only having one cup of rice every day? Imagine digging through the trash for the rest of your life just because you don't know how to read. Can you imagine not even having a bed? Did she sleep out here by herself last night? They learned a little about Hinduism, the majority religion in India. Can you imagine thinking you used to be a bug? Ew! And next you might be a frog. The caste system, though now outlawed, is an integral component of the Hindu view of the cycle of life. It ties in very closely with reincarnation, which says if you are good and suffer quietly in this life, you may ascend to a higher caste in the next life. Which also implies that if you were a low caste person, then you must have been really bad in your last life, which means that you're merely paying the penalty for all the bad things you did in the last life. In this system, the lower castes are not recognized as being really human and are often treated worse than many of the animals which they worship. They're not allowed to go into any temple and aren't allowed many jobs except these menial, degrading jobs like picking through the trash or cleaning the sewer. On this show, early in the morning, the parents asked for help. They didn't ask for money or a home, even though they were very poor and were living on the sidewalk. They just had one request. They are requesting, we, our children are not studying. Can you do some help for them? Their what? Get some education. Oh, education. Yes. All they asked for was education for their children, to break the cycle of poverty. In answer to their plea, Bethel Evening Schools were founded. Children who would never otherwise have an opportunity are able to go to school for two hours in the evening for tutoring, worship, and a free meal. What does it actually take to send a child to a Bethel school? It costs about $7 a month per child, which is sobering when you think about the fact that that's less than a quarter a day. Once they learned about the need, these kindergarten kids started saving their change, looking for coins in payphones, in parking lots, and on the sidewalk. They even started doing little jobs to try to save money. They made their own piggy banks and called them self-denial boxes to help them remember that instead of buying something for themselves, they were going to help the children in India. They have joined the Saving the Lives Club, which my children James and Mary Ann started after they came back from India to help their friends there to know about Jesus. For how many children is this their first meal of the day? Uh, 